Hey guys, BBC Gear here. Welcome back to our weekly update, weekly question answering video. So, we'll just jump right in here. In WWE Immortals, the online challenge, like you see, is Voodoo Bray Wyatt. And the challenge is Red Soldier Rusev. And what's interesting about this challenge is, for the first four ladders, it actually only costs one stamina per fight. The fifth ladder is still three stamina per fight, but what that means is it's a lot easier to grind efficiently, right? Because you can get through 10 of the 12 fights on one character's energy worth, and if you watch a video for that, or if you use the exploit to get out of watching a video for that, you can complete the whole ladder yeah, without it's a switching. waiting. It's a switching that really costs yeah. you time. So you only really have to switch once maximum, so it's fast. In Mortal Kombat X, the online season is a regular season, and the current challenge is still Ronin Kenshi. Just over a week left. So, in Injustice, it's currently Cyber Monday sale. Now, if you see this after today, Monday, it will no longer be valid. But anyways, most packs are 25% off. The Gear Booster pack is actually 62% off, which is making it at least for now, more economical to buy three gear booster packs than a gear lock, uh, rather than a single gear locker. Yeah. Yeah. And so, for the online, the current reward is Reverse Flash, and unlike previous ones, except for the last online character challenge, only the top 3%, as opposed to the top 5%, get them. Yeah, so keep that in mind if you're planning on getting in top 5%. Won't be enough. Yeah, top 4 and 5% don't actually get a copy. Okay, so now we move on to the question and answer. Oh, challenge, just oh, a reminder. Uh, Red Lantern, Hell Jordan, I know it's been a couple weeks. There's still just uh, almost two days left, just under two days left. Reminder, grab him while you can. He's seriously overpowered. Yeah, okay, anyways, now we're going to move into the question and answer period of the video. So our first question comes from Lisa Peacock, and she says, This might be a stupid question, but I just noticed that even if you don't play old but you get the draw, you still go up a ranking. Can you explain this to me, please, in OL Online? Alright, so let's talk about defense. So if you look at the side, here where I'm scrolling up and down, these are the battles. Now there's a shield when you get a defensive battle. When you're attacked and you lose, it's a red shield. And when you're attacked and you win, it's a uh, blue shield. And there's that other sort of stylized A symbol, which is the same. Blue for win, red for loss. But those are when you attack. All right, hold on. So let's start this for one of our, some of the background sort of noise. So online battles fall into two categories. We sort of touched on that already. Offensive and defensive battles. Offensive battles are the ones that you play. So you pick a ladder, difficulty, quick, standard, epic, and ultimate. And afterwards it shows up in your record. And it says uh, victory if you win. And instead of saying attacked, like in a defensive battle, it'll say defeat if you lose. The points you get will depend on the difficulty of your opponent. But, and not including bonuses, the maximum is 5,000 battle points per fight, and not including like the daily missions. Defensive battles are the ones that you don't play. So that's the server-side matchmaker picks your team for someone else to fight. On your record, we just went over that, it shows a little differently. And the other big difference is that you still get battle points if you win, but it's double uh, what it's worth if you were to fight the same team yourself. So if you beat a team with your defensive team, if it was going to be worth 3600 it'll be worth 7200 If it was going to be worth 5000 it becomes worth 10000 although that's much less likely. Yeah, I think this one, we got 9000 for this victory, so that was 4500 times 2. Right. The number of defensive matchups you get, so the number of times your team is used against other people when you're not playing, is entirely up to server-side matchmaker. And up until recently, the biggest magnets uh, for drawing defensive battles were Darkseid, Superman, uh, well, Superman Godfall, and Shazam. 
But with the recent addition of the Arkham Knight characters, it looks like Arkham Knight Batman, for sure, and maybe Arkham Knight, are bigger magnets. And so the older magnets, even with good gear, so we're talking Darkseid, Superman, Godfall, Shazam, were kind of crappy the way the uh, AI plays them. So the win percentage was low. You could increase your win percentage by using other more effective characters. So, you know, like Killer Frost Prime or Raven, and, but, and Raven Prime, but you get fewer defensive matchups. So whichever strategy you chose, somewhere between maybe 50 and 100 defensive wins was what you could expect out of a really sort of the top kind of successful season, right? But that's sort of the really upper end. And there's always outliers, like guys who post on boards that they've got way more defensive wins. But even in a busy season, it you can't really expect it. Part of it has to be circumstances are perfect in order to get better than that. And even good seasons, right now I think we've got maybe like less than 20 wins, and I'd still consider that a relatively successful season, considering we're not using the Arkham Knight guys. And like I said, right now it's the busiest because you've got Reverse Flash. Yeah, anytime there's a reason for people to play for a specific reward, that brings back the people who already have all the other gear and stuff like that, yeah. you get a lot more people with good stuff playing. So you're probably thinking, so all right, so what does that have to do with what I asked? Why does this matter? Well, because your battle point total is the only thing that determines your ranking, right? So it's not how many wins you get, it's not how many losses, it's your battle point total. So it doesn't matter if you get battle points from offense or defense, just that you get battle points. So if you've got a team that's winning on defense at a good clip, then your battle points go up. And since you're winning twice as much compared to an offensive wins in terms of battle points, it's not un inconceivable that your rank will increase to really, as long as your defensive wins uh, increase, or sorry, accumulate faster than other people are winning, even if you're not playing, your ranking can increase. Too. Yeah, which is, I think, what we saw early on with the hackers, right? Where people were literally not really playing at all. They were just having most of the battles, or a disproportionate number of battles, rewrote to themselves, right? And they were winning just because of all the defense battles, because it's actually a lot more important to win defense battles than it is to win other types of battles. Because they're so much more valuable. Yeah, because it's twice as valuable. So you only have to win half as many, and because they're rerouting suits so many, they're actually winning more defense battles than it would be possible for most people to win offense battles with the amount that right. they would be able to commit to play. What they're doing is they're hacking the algorithm, and they're getting, for however they're doing it, they're making sure they're getting the server side matchmaker to use their team a lot. Yeah. So anyways, our next question comes from Kimberly Patterson, and she asks, can the Killing Joke Joker use his super if he's revived from the fourth world set? Now, this is a little bit more of a straightforward question. Yeah, so... Yeah, his passive only triggers once, and that's after he gets knocked out for good. So it doesn't trigger when he is revived from the fourth world gear set. So that first knockout, that's technically not a knockout because he's still there. His passive doesn't trigger. And that's true of anybody whose passive triggers on knockout. So, no Killing Joke Joker can't <coughs> use a super if he's revived from the first world set by his passive if that was what you were asking. And then we have Krishna Najmi says, guys, please improve your video quality. And then, again, later, guys, your uploading quality is really bad as compared to other. Alright, so it's, that's an interesting comment. I mean, basically you're saying we're kind of crap. But, if we assume that you're commenting in good faith and that you're trying to be helpful, um, yeah, listen, we already know that our videos are relatively low quality. We're using an old device, LG Optimus G, if you're wondering, running an older version of Android, 4.1.2. So that means a lot of the software solutions for filming gameplay is either unavailable, uh, because it's incompatible, or just not very good. And as we've said before, this channel is a, a hobby for us, so we're not entirely prepared to invest a lot of money in getting a new device. And I guess the flip side, or well not the flip side, but the corollary to that is that we're also not ready to invest a lot of time in post-production of our videos to make them look nice. And I mean, really, that would just take away time from something else, and at this point that would probably mean fewer videos. And I'm sure that fewer videos would make some of our detractors happy, but you know, what the hell, right? We're just doing this to make ourselves happy, that's sort of the point of a hobby. Yeah. Anyways, our next question comes from Tyreek Turner, and he says, Question, how risky is it to get banned from doing this glitch? Now, this also... Oh, that's a quick tap yeah. glitch. 
And we've answered this before in our uh, FAQs, and you can find our FAQs in our discussion page uh, of our channel, but since this is getting asked a lot lately, it probably bears repeating. Doing the glitch itself, just doing it, that's not risky. Accumulating too many power credits is. So based on hacker reports, one billion credits will definitely get you banned. <coughs> that's a lot. I mean, there's absolutely no reason to accumulate that much. One commenter reported somewhere between 85 and 89 million uh, credits was enough to get a ban, but after a little bit of troubleshooting with him, it turns out that someone had added 1 billion credits to his account, actually his brother, trying to be helpful. So I, that still stands. Really, if you don't go overboard, I mean, the bottom line is just don't overdo it, right? Yeah. And, and for practical purposes, there isn't any great reason to accumulate more than maybe even like 30 million credits. If you buy everything that you can, the extra credits are really only useful for maxing out future challenge characters and gears. So you can just, as soon as they pop up, you finish the challenge and just buy it out or just buy a ton of gear packs if you need to, right? But uh, I, I honestly, I can't, I can't see a justification for just doing it over and over and over and not playing the game anymore, right? Yeah. So we don't know exactly. One billion is. Definitely enough to get you banned. Don't overdo it. Yeah. Do it. Uh, do it a reasonable amount, enough to buy everything that you could ever need for the next several months. If um if you're already at a point where you have most of the stuff in the game, and then enough that you can buy out whatever you don't yet have in the game if you're not at that point yet, right? Well, it, you know what's funny? I I guess I I I've been thinking about this for the last little bit. Remember when the first, what we thought was a game-breaking glitch came, we oh, yeah, buy yeah, yeah. multiple packs for the price of one? Yeah, like 50. And we thought, wow, that's the end of the game, they're going to patch it, and there was the temptation to just accumulate as much as possible, because once they patched it, you wouldn't have it anymore, right? Yeah. But it seems like there's always one more glitch. There's always something. And I guess, you know, that may not be true, but I guess I'm willing to take the chance. I don't really need to hoard that much. And also what it looks like is they're a lot more forgiving of way too many characters That's than true. they are of way too many of something else. Because I think theoretically, if they were going to make a, draw a line, right, there might be people who are looking to get finalize, like get all the copies of all the characters via the packs. Mm -hmm. And there might be like a ridiculous number of any one of the characters, right, before you get um, a significant amount of the other ones maxed out or before you get all the pack exclusives. So I think it's a lot harder for them to draw the line. So even if you are going to do something ridiculous, it seems like the better way to invest a ridiculous amount of like value in your game would be to put it into your extra copies of characters. And but even then, it, it just it it kills the time, right? Like you, it's time you could be could be spending. So time. if you really want to go overboard, have you heard anybody getting banned because they had too many copies of a character? I don't know if anybody would realize it. It would, yeah. I've seen that because of like, characters that weren't supposed to be released yet, and in some cases, characters that were released, but Warner Brothers had forgotten to yeah. stop checking for. Alright, that's it. See you guys next time. Komoda.